welcome to CNET's, Live's, CNET's live coverage of Samsung's third unpacked event of the year. The tagline is, the most powerful galaxy is coming. Today we're expecting the introduction of a few laptops and maybe, hopefully, some surprises. I'm Aya Zaktar alongside Bridget Carey and Scott Stein. Let's give you a rundown of today's plan. We'll be talking about what to expect from the event, then we'll stream Unpacked Live, and then it's back here to dig into all the unpacked goodness. If you guys have any questions or comments about what's coming up from Samsung, let us know. Tweet us with the hashtag CNETLive. I'll do my best to keep track of that. We've already had two unpacked events this year. There was the S21 in January. Then there was the Galaxy Awesome Unpacked event. That's the official title in March, which introduced new affordable iPhones. So let's take a look at the trailer for this third event. So it's it's going. Well, there's there's more to the trailer. We're about to see it again. Here we go. Today is April 28th. So, Bridget, what do you make of that trailer? What do you think's in the box? Well, uh, if we really study this trailer and take it for what it is, uh, uh, we clearly have some product that causes hazardous power fluctuations, perhaps could be weaponized. <laughs> uh, interesting choice, you know, uh, but okay. I'm more curious about why they chose a box like that because, you know, what can you fit in that box? It's kind of boxy you know what do you guys think <laughs> so what do you make of this flipping box i think it's either a gigantic folding phone or it is indeed a laptop and the power is the uh in intense power of 5g that's causing juices to explode everywhere um and it's, you know, interesting i idea. think we expect this to be a laptop yeah <laughs> Yeah, I'm taking a look at that that image, and I think, okay, it's got to be some kind of flipping device, and it just really screams laptop the size of it, unless it is a gigantic phone, which, I mean, Samsung is not beyond doing that. But, you know, there's been tons and tons of leak because, leaks because this is Samsung, and there's always leaks when there's any tech event. It doesn't matter if you're Apple, Samsung, Google, whoever, but there's tons this time. And Evan Blass has some more leaks for us. He has an impeccable track record when it comes to leaks. And he's saying this is going to be a couple of new Windows laptops. So let's take a look at what Evan Blast posted. We've got the Galaxy Book 360. Now, this device is a two-in-one laptop. You can see in the image that it's got S Pen support. Then there's the Galaxy Book, uh, the Galaxy Book without the Pro. That's going to be the more traditional clamshell laptop. And the Pro and the the Pro line is going to be in 13 and 15 inch variants. They would also feature super AMOLED screens. So these devices would also include the option to have 5G. Now we saw some 5G laptops at CES, and they haven't come out. They haven't come out yet. Bridget, what do you think about the addition of 5G to laptops? This is interesting um, because it's so buzzy, right? Uh, but. Uh, for the most part, am I personally as a consumer really needing a data plan for my laptop when certainly, you know, we're working from home, we can use Wi-Fi or I could, you know, take my phone and turn it into a hotspot. But it does prove an interesting twist to say a company looking for uh, an easier solution for their workforce who, you know, maybe I, if I'm a company, I don't need to now worry about, okay, does my employer already have, or my employee already have um, a hotspot or a way to get online? No, that they could just turn it on for someone. So I think it is uh, a benefit to have a device that could just be switched on when you need it. Uh, but for me, the consumer, and I don't think I need a splurge for that. Scott, do you think 5G in laptops is the future, or is this just like a tethering world? 
I feel like inevitably everything is going to have 5G or capability for that. But, you know, whether you're going to want to pay for it or whether you're tethering, uh, you know, whether your plan will have easy add-ons that won't be too expensive. Right now, it's, it's not uh, fast enough for most people, I think, or, or affordable enough. And, you know, it, it, again, like if somebody is going to pay for it, sure. I'm more interested in all the other stuff that it would bring to the table. I'm, I'm excited about the ideas of what how Samsung could phonify the laptop, if that means the S Pen and its displays, uh, you know, those seem like the strongest suit for what Samsung could bring to this compared to the tablets, you know, all the, the S7 and, you know, uh, rumors of the S8 and, 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 you know, will it, will it sort of move to the laptop spectrum for that? You know, I take a look at this idea of 5G and laptops. I love the idea of being able to open up a laptop and then be connected no matter what. There's a huge battery in there. If you've got tons of different radios, you're not worried about cramming them into the form factor. It's big enough. It can house all this stuff. You get a large display. I think it could be really cool. But like you guys are saying, the price uh, tag when it comes to the plans, do you want to actually pay an extra fee? I'm really curious if Samsung would ever broker a deal like the old Apple iPad deals. Do you remember like we could pay 15 bucks? For like a gigabyte, you can turn it on or off, just whenever. I thought that was a really cool thing. We haven't seen that much these days. Now it's all tied together, and you've got to make sure you're on a 5G plan if you're with other carriers. Um, I, th I think I think 5G is good for future-proofing. Like if you're going to spend a lot of money on a laptop, why not have that modem built in? Because you could turn it on later. You don't. It's not like 5G is going to be outdated in three to five years. I mean, how long is your laptop going to survive? Uh, Ev Blast also posted the regular Galaxy Book. Now, this one was a smaller laptop. It's about 14 inches in size, and it's $1,000. It wouldn't have any of the really big be be bells and whistles. I can talk this morning. I've had my coffee. Let me try that again. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles of a pro line, okay? But it's going to start at a much lower price at about $1,000. And because I'm so excited about it, I'm going to skip on I'm going to skip this entire thing. Galaxy Book Pro is fancy but galaxy book go that's what we got to talk about this is an arm-based windows laptop and this is all rumored and this thing would cost just 350 dollars now scott arm-based windows laptops aren't exactly taking over the world what do you think about one starting at 350 and the price sounds really good i think people want something that's 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 right in that zone for their kid or if it's good enough you know the question is you you're competing against both the ipads which are ubiquitous the chromebooks which are really critical for schools and are affordable and and also there were reports that samsung might you know be making a, a another chromebook uh i don't know whether that'll emerge here or could that be tied to this arm thing somehow um I, I love that territory, but but like you said, I think it's a matter of how versatile, how well apps you need work on it. Like basically, Zoom and your Google app environment are those great on it? Well, then you know maybe a lot of people will be interested. Bridget, you got any thoughts on the ARM-based Windows laptops? Oh, it is a fascinating little price because it is definitely fighting up against the Chromebook and. Uh, this this wave of students who just need to get their work done online. You just want something cheap and you want it to work. Uh, but will they be able to kind of, you know, wedge themselves in there? Maybe uh, not in a way where they'll make a big deal with a school because you are competing with, you know, established situations with iPads already in classrooms and Chromebooks. Uh, but maybe at home, you know, mom and dad need an extra, you know, device for the kid. But, you know, hey, they already have a Samsung device and it'll work nicely together. So they'll be kind of more persuaded to go in that direction. Uh, it always comes down to, though, what you need it for. And if it's just something simple to get online and, do, and we're doing most of our work online now, why not have something that uh, in that price range? You know, I'm taking a look at the YouTube chat room, which is always a hit or miss kind of proposition. But a lot of folks are talking about the Apple M1 laptops. That's obviously ARM based. Windows is on ARM. It's been around since 2017. But like you guys were talking about, you know, software needs to work on the hardware. And Microsoft has been very clear about this. You know, the downside of Windows 10 on ARM is that all apps don't work. And if you want to do things like, you know, games, which is something that Windows is fantastic for, you might not be able to do that with these Windows devices. But I think with Samsung, if they're capable of getting a device at this price, at $350, people might start actually paying attention to this because the Microsoft Surface Pro X 
that costs like a thousand dollars there's another lenovo device coming out this spring it's going to cost fourteen hundred dollars and it has uh, an arm based processor so i think Maybe Samsung could jumpstart this thing, even though Apple's screaming ahead with its M1. Don't forget, Microsoft's been in this game for actually longer than Apple has. But then, then again, Microsoft doesn't exactly design their own chips. So that's a lot of information. I asked you guys on Twitter the other day, what do you want to see at Samsung's Unpacked event? And you guys had some things to say. Ian was saying that hopefully they release an updated Windows ARM Galaxy Book. We need more ARM-powered laptops to push the market. And, of course, there was a tons of sarcastic comments. Uh, Patrick says, another unpacked event. This is, you can see Ian's right now. Patrick says, another unpacked event. I know how Samsung feels. I moved a year ago, a year and a half ago, and I'm still unpacking. Okay, so just keep your comments coming. You know, tweet me. Go to, go to CNET Live and uh, the hashtag. Go ahead with the YouTube comments. I'm all over it. But let's talk about how the fact that this is the third unpacked event of the year. It's only April. The S21 got bumped up to January, which is supposed to be around, I think, February or March normally. And then we had another event, a very unusual event, where Samsung spent a lot of time talking about the awesome phones, as they put it. And it seems like this stuff's sort of trickling out in a different way. Bridget, what do you make of yet another Samsung event, third out of third event in four months? Oh, I think this pandemic has changed the game for how we're announcing uh, uh, these these tech products. I mean, think about it. Samsung doesn't have to go rent out a giant venue, have people fly in anymore. Let's just keep the buzz going with uh, some news here, some news there with these, uh, you know, pre-recorded perfected messages, right? Uh, so we're here talking about it in a live stream, but we're not seeing it for ourselves and it's still cheaper for the company to just keep the buzz going. Uh, I think I think it's uh, on one hand kind of interesting to keep, you know, finding out what's going on uh, in smaller bits because you can digest it better. But it also makes me wonder, OK, well, like, are they going to do it for every little tiny product? You know, I wonder where this is going and if other companies are going to uh, look at this and, and start, you know, doing the same. Scott, what, what do you make of all these events? Do you think that Samsung will do the Apple thing? We saw the Apple event recently. They basically just threw up a ton of devices. They're like, here's everything in one. Do you think Samsung is going to do anything beyond laptops today? Well, I think, like, like Bridget said, we're already in this multiple event uh, mentality. And last year, Apple had three events in, in three months. So it's not, you know, Sa Samsung... It's not just a Samsung thing, it's an industry thing. And I think that uh, it, sometimes they'll change track. I think everyone wants to keep everyone on their toes, so you don't want to get too predictable because then that means you might ignore the event. Uh, but I think like the, the Nintendo directifying of you know product releases is here. It's possible Samsung could announce a wild card, something totally different. Glasses, that's not going to happen. But I, I think that uh, I think they'll probably keep this computer focused. It's a computer season. Apple just had computer releases. Microsoft had the a couple of computer releases. You know, Surface Book, um, uh, Surface Laptop Four. So it seems like timing to talk about computers. And the wild card could be a Chromebook. It could be you know, would would Samsung go into some sort of uh, multi-screen computer device? Uh, maybe it's not the season for that financially because if you're already talking about a super expensive. Uh, you know, pro laptop, then how much more would you even want to go right now? I think people want to spend less. You know, I'm looking at the chat and there's somebody's actually asking about it and was hoping for 16 or 17 inch laptops. None of the rumors actually jive with that. We're looking at maybe a max of 15 inch. Do you think that we're going to see any more of these giant laptops? I don't think that seems to be the bread and butter of any company now that I think about it. I'm just thinking about the old maybe power books that were 17 inch and then the power the macbook pros i really don't think of 17 inch devices other than gaming scott what do you think about a potential 17 inch s pen enabled two-in-one flipping samsung device i feel like if you want the big screen that's what monitors are for and then it's getting easier to connect monitors uh with with most computers and or you could go desktop so i think that I, I don't know. I never understood the super big screen laptop thing. Uh, I was never into it. I think now, sure, you're at home, but the price creeps up. Yeah, I, I feel like I don't, I don't really, I don't expect that. Bridget, you look like you're bursting at the seams. What do you got? 
No, I'm just wondering, like, are our, um, as, as consumers, are we like looking for different features now because of uh, this year of more of, of working from home? Uh, certainly, we're all salivating more for webcam cameras that are higher definition. <laughs> so I'm curious if, I mean, it's a little too early to, to maybe answer some of uh, what consumers want, you know, because it always takes time to develop this stuff. But I wonder if, if uh, there will be a pivot that kind of, you know, goes in that direction of what people are looking for when we're all more remote, like the 5G laptop, you know, work from anywhere, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm also thinking Have amazing about cameras. Wife, Sorry. Oh yeah, Samsung's actually managed to pull off some really great camera technology after a while. A lot of the PCs have actually done a great job with their web, with their webcams because th that seemed to be lagging a lot on that other side. Which this is not that's not that show. We'll talk about that other stuff later. But I also think that one of the things that's made a huge difference why 13 and 15 inch laptops have become like the standard is that we want portability in our devices, even though. A 15-inch laptop sounds ridiculous. When I was much younger, in, back when I was in school days, a 15-inch laptop basically was in the form factor of a 17 to 20-inch laptop now. So like it was this massive, hefty, huge bezel, chunky plastic thing. And now people, the, de the designers have pushed the barriers when it comes to screen sizes. They can fit these tiny bezels around it. So you get these really big screens and a really small footprint much easier to carry around. Maybe that's why you want to have 5G and go outside one day, go to a park bench and open this thing up and still have a huge display. I want to talk about the ProLine's Super AMOLED display. Again, all of this stuff is unconfirmed and rumored. This is the pre-show. We'll be at Samsung's event in about 13 minutes, so just hang tight. Everyone's asking, when is it going to start? It's going to start soon. Don't worry. Uh, I think that Super AMOLED screens are f just fantastic. I was going to swear there. I love... AMOLED screens, and once you use one, it's really hard to go back to an LCD. Bridget, do you think that that quality of display will actually entice people to get a Samsung device over, let's say, a competitor? Well, you got to see them side by side. And the problem now is that if you go to some place like a Best Buy, uh, the Apple section's over here. Oh, and then this section's over here. And you, and they're all tethered, so you can't really you know, find out unless you close your eyes and try to memorize, like, what did it look like, and then walk over there. So, uh, you know, it's it's always tough. But, it, it yes, yeah, screens do make people go, ooh, and, you know, uh, especially, especially when you can see it for yourself. I'm also curious on how they can sell, like, the benefits of using that pen. That's going to be something, you know, like, that can really make it stand out. I want to see us get more creative with our laptops and what we can do with them in terms of, like, all right, you want me to pay a lot of money for your high-end laptop? Yeah, give me more than the screen. Let, show me how my work can change because of the way you have it bend and fold and use a pen. And can I use that pen on everything? Or do I have to like, is it the same pen I can use on my phone, you know? Yeah, you, you bring up a good point with the with the Samsung ecosystem, essentially. Like if you have an S Pen, it, there is the S21 Ultra, which does have S Pen compatibility. Say that three times fast. There's the Note, which also has S Pen compatibility. Tons of Chromebooks have S Pen compatibilities. The question is whether you can use one device, one pen on everything. I don't know if you can, honestly. Uh, Scott, do you think that we're going to see some more Galaxy ecosystem stuff where they're going to be like, hey, look how easy it is to use your S21 with our Galaxy book? Because Samsung has been really tight with Microsoft in the past couple of years when it comes to integrating Microsoft products to the point where some of the default backup cloud storage is Microsoft OneCloud. You think they're going to have some kind of software layer, software connect kind of connective tissue with Microsoft when it comes to the Galaxy books? I would expect that. That seemed, I mean, Samsung years ago had been uh, making headway with that. I remember with, with the way their phones connected with laptops when I was reviewing like the head of book nine and, you know, that was like way, way back. But I, yeah, I think that would make sense. I think it would make sense not only to work with S Pen, but to have it more easily throw things back and forth. So if you, you know, were sketching something or, you know, wanted to share something or, you know, touch up something and then easily throw it back to your phone. That would be super cool. I, I'm all about uh, devices handing off easily like that, and maybe this is a great chance for Samsung to do that. Hey, Stephen, can we get some more pictures of the Galaxy Book, maybe the profile, because these devices 
look really, really slick. Some people comparing them to MacBooks, obviously, but they're really, really like kind of almost Microsoft style, what I'm looking at at this point. Like we're talking extremely thin displays. We've got a very thin base. You can see in this picture, you've got a headphone jack, but looks to be a USB-C. Uh, this is the Galaxy Book Pro. This is the one that doesn't flip all the way around. These, these are looking pretty slick. I mean, I, I will say that if you're going to get the Galaxy branding on it, that's what you need to have. But I'm also concerned about the fact that Galaxy has become a bit safe. Very, very safe. If you think about the Galaxy S21, if you think about the Galaxy uh, Note, if you think about Galaxy anything, there's not a ton of experimenting happening anymore when it comes to Galaxy. Do you think that at some point, Bridget, that we're going to see that there's either going to be like an experimental line or is Galaxy just so far baked that it needs to always be safe? This is a safe year, right? You know, like like uh, in terms of uh, just wanting something that works and uh, can do the job. But I would like to see more experimentation. I would like to see more pushing to the edge of, um, you know, th th there's always this... Um, this battle over, uh, you know, this idea of Apple going, <laughs> well, we, you can need a tablet. You don't need your laptop to be a tablet because we still need you to buy iPads. And, uh, you know, show me, uh, Samsung, you know, why they have it wrong and, uh, you know, how life could be easier with, like, one less device uh, you have to carry around. But also, one thing on the other side, um, right now uh, I'm using a MacBook uh, mostly for work and it has that way where you can unlock it because you have the watch and it's really easy to, you know to unlock a couple different ways so I wonder if Samsung looks at that and goes oh how can we be innovative in making just things work faster or uh, once again bringing it home into the ecosystem of other Samsung products because you already have the phone what can we do to make this laptop experience uh, a little more personalized rather than just another work machine so Brian M in the chat is asking, do you think detachables are dead? If you're thinking about devices like the Surface where you can just pop them off and everything. Scott, do you think that we're just stuck in a 2 one future where everything is going to fold back or are we still going to have devices that can be torn apart or are we just looking at, I believe there was a new Dell that actually had something very similar to uh, what Samsung has, what Microsoft has. We do basically have a, you have a magnetic keyboard. Are we away from the world of laptops being torn apart? I always like the idea of detachables. I, you know, I think the problem is that the idea of a tablet is traditionally used like a different chipset, unless you're talking about the Surface, uh, you know, line and 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 Windows tablets, which I feel like Windows tablets never really were like that big a thing. But so you know, may, maybe like the future is about and Apple's already going there with chips merging. Uh, you know, if you start having things essentially be the same chipset, um, you could get there. Uh, I think right now it, it it seems more practical for a lot of people just to have it uh, maybe fold around and and not detach, but I, I think the idea is still out there. I think you know just I agree with Bridget. I think it's a it's a more conservative tech period. I love experimentation, but I, I wouldn't want to buy an experiment right now. Uh, I would want something that works reliably, and I think a lot of people are like that. So the the, the vibe around the computer industry from the last few events is about like performance, value, you know, get putting something out there that uh, you can use with all the stuff that you're doing at home right now. You know where they can experiment? They can experiment in the software, right? Like, and, and, and making, like, and that's a little easier maybe to pull off in a shorter time frame than, than experimenting with the hardware. So uh, if everyone is in the house and they want to, you know, all have their own personal space, you know, like make, show me how my laptop can also be um, uh, something where it could be my television. It could be, it could be everything I need and I could take it anywhere. So maybe they'll, maybe they will lean into that. And that's why they'll, that's why, you know, 5G may be a really big talking point here. Yeah, because when it comes to taking a risk, when you're going to buy a device, you're right, Bridget, software is much easier to change over time because if people don't like it, Samsung could push an update or Microsoft can push an update and go, hey, yeah, we're sorry about that. We're going to fix that. But when it comes to getting a piece of technology, like, okay, what's what am I paying for? Uh, I don't want to get anything too crazy. The Surface Duo comes to mind, a fantastic device. And when I say fantastic, I mean something out of a fantasy. It's a very strange sci-fi dual screen Android device with tons of bezels. Doesn't make a heck of a lot of sense in theory, but but weird. And it's a really hard ask for people to go, 
pay me this money for a device you've never used. So to go with something that's standardized, something that's simple, the two-in-ones, the non-detachables, the flat-out regular clamshells, and lower-priced ARM-based PCs, it might be simpler to just go, okay, we have a software layer that makes everything work. If you want to talk to Bixby on your... There's no other half to that, because nobody wants to do that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, it's, it's not going to happen. I got Bixby on my phone. I never use it other than to turn it off. So that's never going to happen. But they can work with more and more devices, because Samsung is also a part of a ton of consortiums, or consortia. I don't know what the plural is of that, with Apple, Amazon, Google, trying to figure out smart home stuff together. And, oh boy. Yeah, so we're going to get some laptops today. I'm really hoping that we get something strange. I'm going to ask for your surprise picks. What do you think could come out today based on everything we know about Samsung? Scott, you go first. What surprise device do you want to see or do you think is possible? Some sort of conceptual idea of, of, of the next generation of computers that they're not ready to talk about but they could discuss. Or I like Bridget's idea too of uh, if you're going to do something software-based, you talk about how the TVs, the phones, the laptop all work together with some new super cool software feature. Okay. Bridget, what do you got? Something to totally out of uh, uh, the surprise field. They show us that they didn't give up on the smart speaker and they, and, and, and they give us a whole new design. And, and, and because they're working with Windows, we get some sort of Cortana hybrid of Bixby. That would be amazing. That would change my whole week. Yes, Cortana. Are we going like totally out there? Because then, like, I'm going to say, yeah. Then you, they're, they're going to show off the AR glasses. You know, they'll say this is the thing that also works with your laptop, and you get like eight hovering monitors. Uh, Samsung gets back into the glasses space, and um, like they've kind of sat out of the whole VR AR thing. Um, or, or adjacent to it. They're, they're not like super active in that space right now. And I feel like as everyone, it's not going to be this event, but at some point, Samsung is going to re-enter that stuff probably when every other player is going to be entering. Like at the same time, everyone's going to show their cards, but not today. So what I, what I think what we could see today, which is I think unlikely but possible, is a Samsung tab a brand new, either a light version of the Galaxy tablets that are, that are out there. I'm not the biggest Android tablet fan, but if you're going to get one, Samsung does make the best Android tablets. Again, a very small competitive field there. But I think we could see that. If I want to go further, I would love if it was a foldable tablet. So I'm not just talking about the Galaxy Fold that opens up to like a 7-inch. I'm talking about like a flat-out 10-inch or 13-inch one that could be a full-on tablet, and you can fold it in half, kind of like that Lenovo that we saw, I believe at CES, that allows you to have yep. kind of a laptop if you wanted, but the idea that you can always use this device as more than one. Uh, but that's that's beyond the realm of my, of my knowledge at this point. So hopefully we'll see something really cool, but I really do not want to see Cortana back on a speaker. Microsoft even pulled Cortana from its other speakers. So if they're like, we just- Because it wants it to the, make room for this one. The kettle is back. Oh, gosh. Uh, somebody in the chat saying, Bixby and Cortana is a flop. Even Siri is better. Uh, you know what? I, I don't know. I haven't tried that. Um, Scott, I, do you have I'd a love a giant on... full. Oh, sorry. On, on assistance? Um, no, I, I don't really, really heavily use any of them. I, I just find I use very basic commands and then steer clear. It's weird. Voice things never really have worked great for me. They mostly intervene. But no, I, I mean, Google's probably is, is the best, I would say. Um, but, but yeah, no, I think I agree with your folding tablet thing. I think folding large tablets are a lot more practical than the phone uh, right now until phones can, you know, I looked at the Duo, until phones can work out their software and apps to really be designed for those dual screens. Whereas with, a, with a, a, like that Lenovo one or ones like that, you could put a whole display on one half or on another half, but also make the form more usable. So you could do that on the Duo, but then it made holding it or using it often very awkward. And I found that the, the, the transformation from one to the other became uh, like it really got in the way of using it. But I think that you could, there are keyboard overlays, there are things you could do to 
you know, get, get over that hump of like portable tablet to something much more expansive. So I love that idea well, at the right price. It looks like Unpacked is about to begin. So we're going to take you there live. Don't forget, we're going to be back with our post show to recap and analyze all the news. Remember to tweet out your thoughts, be in the, in the chat and YouTube, and uh, we'll catch you after the event. So let's go see what Samsung's got. Hello, and welcome to a very special unpack. Over the last decade, we at Samsung have pioneered countless exciting mobile experiences. New hardware, new software, new ways to stay connected and give you the freedom to live your life to the fullest. With all of our mobile innovations and so many more industry-leading technologies, we have reinvented yet another category, the personal computer. Today, I am so proud to introduce you to the next evolution of the PC, the new line of Galaxy Books, true mobile computing for the connected world. When we set out to reimagine a new mobile computing experience, we asked ourselves a single question. Why can't laptops be more like smartphones? The answer was right in front of us. Mobility, connectivity, continuity. Performance on the go, ultra vivid displays, and seamless integration with your devices. Everything that has always been at a core of the Galaxy experience. And now, we've brought all of that to the PC the latest addition to the incredible Galaxy ecosystem. The Galaxy Books are ultra light and ultra mighty, as thin as a smartphone, but as powerful as a PC. They have boundaryless connectivity, so then you always have the freedom to set your own hours wherever you go. And there are a window into your Galaxy perfectly designed for seamless use across all of your favorite devices. And for the very first time, flawless integration across Android and Windows, the result of open collaboration with the long-standing partners to provide the best connected experience. You'll hear more about the collaboration behind the new Galaxy Books in a few minutes. But first, Here's Stephanie to tell you more about all the ways that the Galaxy brand is changing the world. Thanks, Tian. So let's talk about the Samsung Galaxy approach to meaningful innovation and how it can help enrich people's lives through technology and empower them to create a more open and collaborative world. Meaningful innovation means we have to overcome the barriers that stand in the way of people's passions progress, and pursuit of a better future. We need to innovate for a world that's open in every way, so people could be the best versions of themselves. A world where they don't have to compromise who they are or what they believe in to achieve their dreams. And they expect a mobile experience that matches up. They want technology that translates vision into reality. And this has always been the spirit of Samsung Galaxy. When we wanted to give people more freedom to express themselves, we designed the S Pen and the Galaxy Note. And to offer new levels of versatility, we revolutionized the smartphone category with the Galaxy Fold. But Galaxy is more than just game-changing technology. It's about empowering experiences without limitations. 
We believe in giving people the flexibility to connect with devices, platforms, and brands on their own terms. Now, we're bringing our open world mindset and the latest innovation to a category that's ready for a bold new chapter, personal computers. With so many people working and learning remotely, PCs have taken on a bigger role in our lives. Yet, we're still using technology designed for the old rules of work and play. So as TM just mentioned, we found ourselves wondering, why can't laptops be more like smartphones? After all, smartphones are ready for anything. They pack high end performance in a design that's thin, lightweight, and totally portable. You can connect to the internet with or without Wi-Fi 24 seven. Share photos and files in an instant, all with a full day battery that can keep up with your life. We're bringing what people love most about their smartphones to a conventional laptop experience so you can communicate, collaborate, and innovate wherever you are. Because when we eliminate the barriers that stand in our way, we discover new paths and possibilities. Life opens up with Galaxy. Back to you, TM. Thank you, Stephanie. At Samsung, we have always believed that the best innovations only happen with the teamwork. In order to innovate, you have to collaborate. Nowhere is that more true than with our new mobile computing experience, the result of an amazing collaboration between Samsung, Intel, and Microsoft. I'd like to welcome to the stage my good friend, Gregory Bryant at Intel. Hey, hey TM, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. And joining us remotely, Panas Pane from our close partner, Microsoft. Thanks, TM. So nice to see you and great to see you as well, GB. For over 50 years, Intel has pushed the limits of silicon. They've done it again with the Galaxy Book, the first computer to combine the mobility and freedom of a smartphone with the power and performance of a PC. And when it comes to productivity with the continuity, Microsoft is the best in the business. Whether working remotely or enhancing your productivity between PC and mobile. Microsoft knew just what the Galaxy Books needed. We all brought our best ideas to the table to completely reimagine mobile computing for a new era. GB, take it away. Thank you, TM. It's an honor to be here. Samsung and Intel have a shared vision to deliver premier computing experiences that deliver uncompromised mobility, blazing fast connectivity, and real-world performance, all to unlock people's potential. And over the years, we've made significant progress towards this vision. And today, I'm excited to announce that we're doing something even bolder and more industry-shaping. We're bringing together the best of our two companies, the best of the PC and smartphone experiences, our technology portfolio, our engineers and brands, to build an ecosystem of devices that works seamlessly together and that delights consumers. And that starts today with the launch of some of the industry's best Intel Evo designs. As a result of investing hundreds of thousands of hours, we've co-engineered a new family of PCs that meet all the verified standards of the Evo platform, including industry-leading responsiveness, instant wake, and long battery life. We then elevated that experience further by delivering the world's thinnest Evo designs. Custom Bluetooth enablement that unlocks seamless interactions across peripherals and devices, and industry-leading connectivity, including 5G and Wi-Fi 6E capability. This experience is unmatched in the industry. Now looking ahead, you can expect even
innovative Windows PCs, Windows tablets, and Samsung phones to market together, bringing Microsoft apps and services to life, including the likes of OneDrive, Outlook, your phone linked directly into Windows, and seamless integration with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all on Samsung devices, enabling people to live productive anywhere, anytime. And after a year of change, we're looking to a future where people are regrounding themselves and what's important to them, to each of us. How we stay connected, how we work, learn, how we socialize and entertain. Whether it's for work or school or home, our PCs, our tablets and mobile devices are more essential right now than they've ever been before. And today, we're excited to take the next step forward in our partnership with Samsung. Samsung's launching a new portfolio of connected Windows PCs and expanding the availability of all of these awesome devices to more geographies and customers. This is super exciting. This PC portfolio builds on Samsung's strength in highly mobile and connected devices and solutions. And together, we're integrating Windows even deeper within the Galaxy ecosystem to create experiences that are simple, smooth, and stunning. I'm incredibly proud to be working together to help our customers stay connected be more productive, more creative, and discover brand new possibilities with Samsung and Microsoft together. We're so excited for what the future holds. Back to you, TM. Thank you, Panos, and thank you, Microsoft, for such an amazing collaboration. I am so proud of everything we did together. The results speak for themselves. They combine stylish mobility, boundaries connectivity, and seamless continuity. The next amazing chapter in the story of the PC. This is mobile computing powered by Samsung Galaxy. Let's meet the all new Galaxy Book Pro and Galaxy Book Pro 360. Introducing the all-new Galaxy Book Pro and Galaxy Book Pro 360. For the first time ever, we're bringing the smartphone experience straight to your PC. Galaxy Book Pro comes in a clamshell design. At just 11.2 millimeters and 868 grams, the 13.3-inch Galaxy Book Pro is the thinnest and lightest Galaxy Book ever. Meanwhile, the 2-in-1 convertible Galaxy Book Pro 360 is more than a PC. It's a creative canvas you can take anywhere. It's as thin as your smartphone and weighs about one kilogram. Using our expertise from designing Galaxy foldable smartphones, we created the thinnest hinge possible for a convertible PC, giving you a smooth and seamless experience. Both models are available in two sizes, 13.3 inch and 15.6 inch. Each model comes in its own set of three gorgeous colors. The Galaxy Book Pro has a striking two-tone color, while the Galaxy Book Pro 360 sports a full metallic look. Our team crafted every part of this PC to break new ground in computer design. Let's take a closer look. We built the Galaxy Book Pro series with the durability and lightness you expect from your smartphone. Presenting our newest additions to the Galaxy lineup, the Galaxy Book Pro 360 and Galaxy Book Pro, PCs infused with our Galaxy DNA. With 360 degree turns, the Galaxy Book Pro 360 is built for conventional and unconventional uses. 
A PC this flexible needs to be able to handle everything you do from every angle. So we made this Galaxy Book incredibly durable. To keep it light without compromising that durability, we chose 6000 series aluminium as our main ingredient and reimagined our manufacturing process, finding the golden ratio of thickness, weight and stiffness. To craft the upper portion, we extruded the metal to 2.8 mm. With relentless research and experimentation, we discovered the optimal structure. Then, we used the CNC method to slim parts of the upper portion down to 0.5 mm while maintaining impressive durability. When crafting the front portion, we combined the standard CNC and press method, so the front portion is now slimmer, half of its original thickness. Then we polished, sandblasted, and anodized. The result? Galaxy Book Pro 360's stunning, durable finish. And for the Galaxy Book Pro, we took portability to new heights. We set out to build a super lightweight PC with the mobility of a smartphone. For this model, we reduced the overall weight. We also meticulously crafted our ultra-slim bezel by using the silk printing method. And for a glossy texture, we incorporated nano-imprinting lithography, a technique used to fabricate semiconductors. This allowed us to create a 15 and 13 inch bezel from the same sheet, optimizing efficiency and reducing waste. So Galaxy Book Pro is sustainable on top of its lightness and mobility. With the Galaxy Book Pro 360 and Galaxy Book Pro, we've redefined and reimagined laptops so you can harness more mobility, more possibilities, and more freedom, all on your PC. As you can see, we were inspired by our smartphones while designing the Galaxy Book series. And we made sure to include some of the best smartphone tech as well, starting with the display. Galaxy Book Pro comes with industry-leading AMOLED displays. They're 30 times more responsive and 200 times more vivid than LCD screens, with 35% more accurate colors. These screens are also equipped with eye care display, which helps reduce eye strain by cutting harmful blue light to less than 6.5%. We also built Galaxy Book Pro with full port support, so you can easily connect to other devices. If you want to kick your productivity up a notch, you can link up to three external monitors. And with Thunderbolt 4 support, you can connect to many peripherals including a display at 8K. And for customers who want our most advanced display technology, Galaxy Book Pro 360's Super AMOLED display goes above and beyond. We brought the signature touchscreen experience from our smartphones and tablets, so you can control the screen like you would a tablet and use an S Pen with it too. The S Pen comes right in the box, and it's the size of a real pen with a comfortable grip. You can draw, speak, and record easily using our S Pen and screen recorder. And with Studio Plus, you can edit and share your recorded content. And you can do it all without a separate mic, camera, or editing program. The S Pen is the perfect companion for taking your productivity and creativity to the next level. The AMOLED screens on Galaxy Book Pro and Galaxy Book Pro 360 both give you amazing visual experiences. And with live wallpaper that changes to match the time of day, you can enjoy our displays in all their vibrant colors. But these models don't just deliver great visuals. They also deliver amazing sound quality. Thanks to Dolby Atmos Audio Technology, a next-generation surround sound system, you can immerse yourself in your favorite shows and movies. We've all been spending more time on our PCs over the past year. So we wanted to optimize the Galaxy Book Pro series to make every experience more comfortable. We started by studying how people use their keyboards. We looked at the way our fingers exert pressure and the elasticity of the keys to determine an optimal travel distance of one millimeter. This, along with the refined scissor mechanism, allowed us to build a smooth and springy keyboard while keeping the Galaxy Book Pro series thin. The result? Our best ever typing experience with the quieter, softer, and more responsive Pro keyboard. While designing the Pro Keyboard, 
we slimmed down its plate and gave it a slight upward positioning. This created space for a bigger, more enhanced touchpad. This new touchpad and keyboard will optimize your scrolling and typing. But we know that these days, we all spend a lot of time on video calls. These PCs come with dual array mics placed on either side of the camera to better capture and amplify your voice. An intelligent noise canceling detects and removes background noise. So even if your dog's barking or there's construction nearby, your calls will have fewer interruptions. As you can see, we're bringing the best of mobility from our Galaxy smartphones and tablets straight to your PC. Of course, this requires both power and connectivity, and the Galaxy Book Pro series is no exception. To tell you more about it, here's Hassan. Our Galaxy smartphones are like extensions of ourselves. We use them for everything, and that's why they're packed with incredible capabilities from top to bottom and from inside out. But what makes our smartphones really special is their secure, dedicated connectivity. Today, I'm excited to announce that we're bringing this connectivity to the Galaxy Book Pro series. We launched the world's first ever commercial 5G smartphone two years ago. And now, we're bringing 5G to the Galaxy Book Pro 360. With this level of connectivity, you're no longer limited to areas with Wi-Fi to download or to stream video. You can get online wherever you are, even when you're out in the park. And keeping your devices connected takes a serious high-performance chipset. So we partnered with Intel to deliver a powerful performance on the Galaxy Book Pro series. To hear more about this incredible partnership, let's welcome back GB. Today, with the launch of the Galaxy Book Pro and Pro 360, Samsung and Intel marked a new era in our partnership. Built on the Intel Evo platform, the new Galaxy Book designs have been co-engineered and verified for an exceptional mobile experience, including incredible performance, long battery life, and instant wake. To further deliver on the promise of uncompromised mobility, we had to engineer something that had the thinness and responsiveness of a smartphone, coupled with the performance of a PC. We did this by optimizing PC experiences that are tuned from the inside out. We shrunk the motherboard, we improved the battery life, and we delivered the most efficient thermals to deliver the highest performance on the go. We also enabled an integrated full-touch display. And finally, for better virtual collaboration, we built an AI engine to make video conferencing with longer battery life and advanced features like background noise removal and background blur. Each of these innovations were critical in creating a beautiful PC that offers maximum versatility in the world's thinnest Evo design. And that brings me to the two final elements needed to deliver great mobility, blazing fast connection to the cloud and powerful performance. The Galaxy Book lineup is equipped to deliver three industry-leading connectivity solutions, Wi-Fi 6E, 5G, and custom Bluetooth enablement. Together, these technologies unlock anytime, anywhere access across all Samsung devices at gigabit plus speeds. And then last but not least, at the heart of the Galaxy Book is the 11th gen Intel Core processor with Intel Iris Xe graphics. It's the world's best processor for thin and light laptops, delivering real world performance and capabilities for productivity, collaboration, content creation, gaming and entertainment. And as you can see, every technology found in the Galaxy Book was integrated to keep people in the flow and focused on the things that matter most to them. And they were all made possible by Samsung and Intel's commitment to driving innovation forward and delivering a new standard for computing. Thanks, GB. Our work with Intel has led to a lineup of next generation PCs that deliver incredible performance with powerful processors. To ensure the heat is removed from the CPU and well dissipated into the air, we started by redesigning the heatsink, the mechanism that keeps your PC cool. As bar razors in the smartphone category, we applied our learnings to push the envelope, reducing the size of the heat pipe to a remarkable one millimeter. We also paid close attention to the fan's design to optimize airflow. We fit up to 73 blades, boosted the impeller's diameter to up to 50 millimeters, and gave the radial blade a new forward curve. So, when you're playing an intense game, 
creating and editing content, or doing heavy tasks on multiple monitors, our enhanced cooling system helps sustain high performance. Our mobile first mindset helped us redesign the battery too. We redesigned the battery cell by optimizing its platform, which led to the creation of this super slim battery, all while reaching a higher energy density. Simply put, we fit more power into less space. The Galaxy Book Pro series can deliver up to 20 hours of video playback or up to 16 hours of standard usage for work and play. The Pro series can be charged for up to 8 hours of use in just 30 minutes. We relied on our mobile expertise to make bold changes to the hardware from the chipset to the battery. Let's hear more about these fundamental changes and innovations that went into these amazing products. Designing new products is much like designing a new city. The product I have here is precisely that. It all began with a simple question. Why can't laptops be more like smartphones? By using mobile parts, we could reduce the size of hardware and increase the level of integration. And that gave us a powerful Galaxy Book that's slimmer and lighter than ever before. Galaxy Book's most fundamental component is the PCB. Its role can be compared to a city's infrastructure, like a road network. Mobile parts, including 5G hardware, were added. So more than 23,000 parts had to be installed in Galaxy Book. We needed to rethink the PCB configuration, called artwork. By optimizing the distance between the CPU and memory, we created the beautiful piece of equipment you see here. We needed a Galaxy craftsmanship at its finest. Next, we turn to the battery. Like a city's powerhouse, it's a cornerstone that defines the user experience. With our Galaxy expertise, we increased the energy density of the battery pack and reinforced it with an extra safety feature. We also added a longevity algorithm to extend the time you can use your Galaxy Book. Finally, we tested out the battery and found it met rigorous standards for capacity and durability. We're here to present a winning combination of innovation and craftsmanship. Meet the new Galaxy Book. At Samsung, we're committed to innovation at every level. Building better tech, improving your life, and paving the way for a healthier planet. This year, we took a leap forward to deliver a more sustainable Galaxy Book experience. It starts with our super fast 65 watt charger. We use gallium nitride, a wide band gap semiconductor that can handle higher voltage more efficiently than standard materials. With this change, we're able to reduce the size of the charger along with the materials required overall. We also built this charger with recycled materials. The Galaxy Book Pro and its charger together weigh only about one kilogram. This charger comes with a detachable USB-C cable. So you can use this one super fast charger for your Galaxy devices. That's easier for you and it's better for the environment too. We also slimmed down the packaging size of our new PCs by up to 39% thanks to our thin and light product designs. That means we're creating less raw material waste and conserving energy. To top it all off, we even made the outer and interior materials with recyclable paper. Samsung continues to expand our commitment to an eco-friendly experience. Thanks to our mobile DNA, the Galaxy Book Pro is the world's thinnest in its class with a stunning AMOLED display and LTE connectivity. And the Galaxy Book Pro 360 delivers a gorgeous Super AMOLED display and 5G connectivity, all in a flexible two-in-one form factor. We're kicking off a new era for PCs, delivering the mobility, connectivity, and continuity you deserve. And this is just the beginning of our exciting lineup. Introducing the Galaxy Book.
As you've just seen, the Galaxy Book is designed to make Samsung innovation accessible to everyone. Students, teachers, creators, artists, anyone who wants the tools to bring their best ideas to life. It comes with a 15.6-inch display, slim bezel, and a body that opens to a full 180 degrees. It's available in Mystic Blue or Mystic Silver. And this PC delivers both portability and power. The 11th Gen Intel Core processor with Iris Xe graphics, the same chipset on the Galaxy Book Pro series, is also available on Galaxy Book, delivering powerful performance while focusing on the essentials. We know an important part of the mobile computing experience is the ability to stay online and connected. That's why we're bringing LTE connectivity to your Galaxy Book. Personally, over the past year, I spent more time online than ever before. Whether I was catching up with friends or family, I made a lot of video calls, and I'm sure you did too. With studio mode, you can customize the way you look on screen. You can add lighting effects and use filters to tweak your appearance. And when you're in the middle of a video chat, you can easily and quickly turn off your camera and mic thanks to our dedicated function key. Just like the Pro Series, Galaxy Book comes with Dolby Atmos audio technology, so you'll get incredible sound while watching a new movie or show. And with its long-lasting battery, you can indulge in your favorite activities. It also comes packed with many useful ports, including a micro SD port. And that's just one more way your Galaxy Book will meet your everyday essential needs. And of course, we can't forget about gamers. For you guys, we bring you the Galaxy Book Odyssey. Galaxy Book Odyssey comes in mystic black with a unique cover logo for a striking, standout look. With NVIDIA RTX 3050 Ti GPU, we deliver a smooth gaming experience, even in this thin and light design. And with its powerful Tiger Lake Age chipset, this PC performs under pressure, giving you optimal performance. It's ready to deliver high-quality gameplay from the very best of Xbox Game Pass. Galaxy Book delivers 11th Gen Intel processor and LTE connectivity, all in a thin and mobile form factor. Galaxy Book Odyssey has an even more powerful chipset and a unique design. It's a perfect match for gamers about to embark on their wildest adventures. Both Galaxy Books deliver the power and portability you need, with the essentials to take your favorite activities to all new heights. At the east entrance. Welcome to the Museum of Laptops, a journey back to a time before we asked the question, why can't laptops be more like phones? This way. Here we go. Please No. Nope. Old Wi-Fi passwords used before 5G. Powerful laptops used to be so big and heavy. Oh, no touching, please. Why not? There's no touch screens. No point. Who is that? It's you on an old laptop video call. No. Why not try this? Oh, my gosh. I present to you a film on old laptop screens under bright sunshine. I can't see it. Exactly. Next exhibit. Now, prepare yourselves. You're about to feel what it's like to drop like an old laptop battery. <laughs> Yeah, I've just quick shared it to all of you. Back in my day, you had to email it to yourself. Well, luckily, Galaxy Book changed all of that. Our Galaxy Books are now part of a wider Galaxy experience. They work harmoniously with our devices to add more flexibility and convenience to your everyday life. To tell you more, here's Patrick. The entire Galaxy innovation story is shaped by the pursuit of a better, more complete Galaxy experience, taking each generation a step further. When designing the Galaxy Book series, our most important goal, beyond creating the most powerful laptop, was to extend the expected user experience of Galaxy devices. Our Galaxy innovators extracted the DNA that makes a Galaxy device. With these insights, we took the traditional laptop and transformed it into an entirely new computing experience. Is the answer to a question, why can't laptops be more like smartphones? We took what's most useful from the mobile experience 
and brought it to the Galaxy Book. We had a special focus on delivering continuity through device connection, expansion, and sharing. When setting up a new PC, transferring the file that you have accumulated over the years is painful. That's why we added Galaxy Book Smart Switch. Just like Smart Switch on a Galaxy smartphone, it does all the heavy lifting for you. It moves all sorts of data, files, settings, apps. This time, from a Windows PC to your new Galaxy Book. We continue to deeply collaborate with Microsoft to lead a seamless Galaxy to PC experience. Enjoy your mobile apps on your Galaxy Book, thanks to the Link to Windows integration. You'll see for yourself how unified it looks. And with easy app syncing, even across different operating systems, your productivity will be enriched. For the first time, SmartThings is integrated into a PC. Again, making the Galaxy Book unique. You can tie and connect all your SmartThings devices on this PC. With the addition of Galaxy Book series, we redefine the possibilities our Galaxy family can bring. From smartphone to the tab, watch, buds, and now the Galaxy Book. We are truly excited to invite you to an enriched Galaxy experience. Over the years, Samsung Galaxy has delivered meaningful mobile experiences. And now we're bringing those same experiences to the PC. We want you to have a seamless journey from the moment you take your Galaxy Book out of the box and turn it on. Transferring your data to a new phone is simple, especially on Samsung smartphones and tablets, where a smart switch makes it easy to transfer your data and device settings. To date, our customers have made over 355 million data transfers with Smart Switch. Moving data to a new PC, however, has always been more complicated. You have to transfer all your files to an external hard drive, then copy it over to your new computer. Not anymore. Today, we're bringing Galaxy Book Smart Switch to our Galaxy Book series, so you can easily switch over from any Windows PC to your new Galaxy Book. Once you've set up your Galaxy Book, you'll enjoy a more continuous experience across your Galaxy devices. With easy Bluetooth connection, pairing your Galaxy Buds with your Galaxy Book is a hassle-free experience. It's a short and simple process with an intuitive pop-up UI that'll be familiar to Galaxy smartphone users. At Samsung, we make technologies that work great together. On any given day, I constantly go back and forth between my smartphone and my PC. And we know that you did too. That's why we made sure the Galaxy Book series delivers a continuous phone-to-PC experience. When you first boot up your Galaxy Book, you'll be greeted by some of your favorite apps, like Samsung Notes and Samsung Gallery. I use Samsung Notes on my smartphone all the time. And now, those notes will sync to my Galaxy Book in seconds. From ideas that jump to mind, to notes from your calls, simply access what you write down in Samsung Notes and continue your train of thought on any of your Galaxy devices. We've made similar changes to Samsung Gallery, so you can pull up your photos and videos from your Galaxy smartphone right on your Galaxy Book. You can even edit and apply filters just like you would on your smartphone. The new Galaxy Book series enhances the Galaxy experience, and we've been working with Microsoft to take it even further. To tell you more about our collaboration in bringing a seamless phone-to-PC experience to life, let's welcome the head of cross-device experiences from Microsoft. Hey, Shilpa. Thank you, Stanley. For the past two years, Microsoft and Samsung have partnered to create a unified experience across Windows PCs and Samsung smartphones. With the new Galaxy Book, you can expect the exact same level of continuity between your devices, a unified and effortless experience. From your Windows PC, you can use the Your Phone app and link to Windows to seamlessly send and receive texts, make and answer phone calls, and access all of your photos taken on your phone in full resolution. And if you own a Galaxy smartphone, you can effortlessly run your favorite phone apps, from social to communication, side by side, directly on your Galaxy Book. It has never been easier to interact with phone apps with your mouse, your keyboard, touch, and ink. For me personally, 
the Your Phone app has been life changing during our remote everything life this last year. Just last week, I was in the middle of a Teams meeting on my Windows PC, and I was able to easily text my husband about our child's remote school schedule without needing to switch devices. Now, the Galaxy Book can do this for you as well. I also have my social and communication phone apps pinned to my Windows taskbar, allowing me one click access to my friends and family. And when it comes to phone calls, I can easily pick those up right from my Galaxy Book as well. With your phone app, your Windows clipboard and phone clipboard stay in sync. And this makes copy paste a breeze across all your Galaxy devices. And to take your productivity up a notch, we've integrated the most popular Samsung Galaxy apps with our productivity Microsoft 365 apps. The Samsung Reminder app on your phone syncs perfectly with Microsoft To Do. Now you can enjoy that same connected experience when it comes to your beautiful photos taken with your advanced camera on your Galaxy phone. With OneDrive natively integrated with Samsung Gallery, you can keep your memories safe and relive your memories as motion photos wherever you might be. And lastly, later this year, Samsung Notes will sync across your Galaxy smartphone and your Windows PC. You will also be able to search for and access all your Samsung Notes inside Microsoft OneNote, Outlook, Word, Excel, and even PowerPoint, making it an amazing continuous experience designed to help you do more. I am incredibly proud of the experiences our Samsung and Microsoft Teams have created together. And I hope you will enjoy them as well on your brand new Galaxy Book. Thanks, Shilpa. It's great to hear about the amazing innovations Microsoft and Samsung have achieved together. The Galaxy experience is all about making your lives better and delivering the very best technology we can offer. Most of us use our PCs to get work done. So we built a whole ecosystem around the Galaxy Book series to help you be as productive as possible. A lot of us need more than one display to develop our creativity. With Second Screen, you can use your Galaxy tablet to duplicate or extend your Galaxy Book's display. You can open up a design on your Galaxy Book Pro and sketch on your Galaxy Tab using the S Pen. You'll get to enjoy the best of both devices. But as we all know, we tend to get more done when we collaborate. Easy sharing of our thoughts and creative sketches is important. And that's why we're bringing QuickShare to our Galaxy Books. QuickShare makes the sharing process easy and painless. With a simple right click or a drag and drop, QuickShare lets you share individual files or even a whole folder at once right from your Galaxy Book to another Galaxy device. It's also important to know where our files are stored. Quick Search is our solution to help you quickly find your files. You don't even need to know the file name. Just enter a keyword and Quick Search will do the rest. It can search the text within a file and even text that's embedded in images to pull up exactly what you're looking for, faster than the native search tool. And because we know PC users need to find and share files often, we pinned Quick Share and Quick Search to the Windows taskbar for easy access. At Samsung, we create experiences that are seamless, continuous, and mobile. Experiences you can enjoy across all your devices thanks to our incredible network of interconnected tech, the Galaxy ecosystem. We're bringing the benefits of smart things to the Galaxy Book series by expanding the boundaries of what's possible, starting with Smart Things Find. The new Galaxy Book's built-in Bluetooth module enables a revolutionary offline finding function. So if you lose your Galaxy Book, a nearby Galaxy Find node will transmit its location to your SmartThings app. We are proud to announce that to date, 68 million people have joined our Galaxy Find network, a global community that helps people find their lost items. SmartThings is all about helping your devices work together. The new Galaxy Book series will include SmartThings Dashboard. Previously, SmartThings Dashboard was only accessible from Galaxy smartphones and tablets. But now, easily access your connected devices from your Galaxy Book, even while in the middle of your creative works. With a single click of my customized morning routine, the robot vacuum will clean and my washer will run while I'm getting ready in the morning. And of course, you can quickly access your most used devices on favorites 
or use Bixby voice control for convenience. We envision a future where our Galaxy Books become the perfect IoT hub. As we continue to build on this experience, we look forward to seeing smart things complement your life and make your everyday more convenient. The Galaxy Book series radically changes what consumers can expect from their PCs. It delivers a mobile PC experience and phone-to-PC continuity. The tools to enhance your productivity and a connected ecosystem powered by smart things. And it's all waiting for you. Back to you, Charlie. As you can see, the Galaxy Book series delivers a seamless mobile computing experience within our ecosystem. And for a truly worry-free experience, we've been offering Samsung Care Plus, our total care service, to guarantee your Galaxy devices against damage. Samsung Care Plus offers convenient customer service, such as hassle-free discounted repairs and help from our authorized technicians. With extended coverage, you can protect your Galaxy Book and every experience that comes with it. We're excited to offer Galaxy Book Pro, the world's thinnest PC in its class, packed with powerful performance. Galaxy Book Pro 360, a two-in-one convertible PC which comes with the S Pen. And Galaxy Book, which brings you the essential features you need. With a full lineup of Galaxy Books to choose from, we're giving you the freedom to pick the model that's right for you. Galaxy Book Pro will be available starting at $999. Galaxy Book Pro 360 will be available starting at $1199. You can also meet the Galaxy Book from $549 and the Galaxy Book Odyssey from $1399. The new line of Galaxy Books will launch on May 14th, and the Galaxy Book Pro series pre-orders start today. And our Galaxy Book Odyssey will be available starting this August. Back to you, TM. So there you have it. The Galaxy Book Pro, Galaxy Book Pro 360, and the Galaxy Book. Together, they represent a new era of mobile computing where your PC finally gives you the experience you deserve. On behalf of everyone at Samsung, thank you again for joining us. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Unpacked event. For those of, those of you just joining us, I'm Aya Zaktar, the man who cannot speak. Here with me is Bridget Carey and Scott. The theme today was why can't laptops be more like smartphones? I'm just going to throw a rundown of everything we saw because there was actually a lot of stuff in this. We saw the Galaxy Book Pro with Intel processors. There's an Intel rep on stage talking about Galaxy Book Pros being a part of the Intel Evo platform. We'll talk a bit about the Evo platform a little bit later. Uh, there's the Pro and the Pro 360, like we were talking about in the pre-show, and they seem to start around $999. The Pro 360, I believe, is $1199. The Pro is the clamshell. The 360's got the two-in-one, two sizes. They're talking about how durable the Pro 360 is. Uh, we've got a lot on that. There's Dolby Atmos. There's 5G on the Pro. It's got the latest Wi-Fi, 11th generation Intel Core processors. 20-hour battery life is the claim, which is pretty huge. And it comes with a 65 watt charger, which is super tiny. It's like looks like a smartphone uh, device, and it actually charges your phone too. There was also a 15.6 inch Galaxy Book. Now this little guy only costs or starts at $549. Then there was a Galaxy Book Odyssey, the gamer laptop, which I don't remember reading any rumors about. This would have an NVIDIA RTX 3050 Ti GPU, and it wouldn't be available until August. So that's a lot of stuff. Nothing about an ARM-powered Windows PC unless I missed it. Bridget, what did you think about this presentation? 
Well, the style could have used a bit of an improvement. I mean, we took 15 minutes before we got to a device. It was all kind of like all over the place. But at the end, that's where we really saw the meat and Samsung making the case that all you people who are used to your iPhones talking with your MacBooks, we can do that too. <laughs> I don't mean to be totally like, ah, they're doing what Apple's doing. But it kind of felt that way because we're hearing the same types of things that they were hitting on about, like uh, Galaxy Find, being able to find devices just the same, uh, qu uh, quick shares like AirDrop, um, keeping it all together, your notes, your chats, being able to text from your phone, all great things. And that's really what they need to do, that they need to make the case for that. Um, I kind of was impressed by, I mean, it's, it's gosh, there was a lot in this, so I'll just kind of go around randomly here, but uh, quick search, found that to be kind of interesting. You can search for any file on any device, and if, say, you took a photo of a sign, if you type a word that was in that picture, it can still detect a word that was in an image. So that was kind of interesting. I wonder if you can detect objects in an image too. Like if I type tree, will I get photos of trees? Um, so like I kind of wanted more on that. Like I wanted more on that kind of fun stuff. Like, oh, show me, show me the cool tricks you can do. Uh, but they did spend a lot of time on the hardware. Uh, and, uh, and yet we're t hearing all this about, okay, your video chats are gonna sound better, but I didn't hear much about it looking better. <laughs> Scott, you were mentioning that when we were watching the presentation, that they didn't seem to mention the camera, at least in the in the body of the presentation. What did you think of these laptops? And the laptops look nice, and I think that the you know the display, like we were saying before, that's going to make a difference. The S Pen stuff sounds promising, although I don't feel like they went into like really as much detail on how much it's going to feel like the Microsoft Pen, or whether it's going to feel like exactly like the phone or whether it's going to you know have exactly the same controls and 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 you know they they kind of didn't dive in too deep into that uh yeah when they talked about video chat they literally showed the camera and then started talking about the microphones so i think the problem is that right now we're we're you know you think about how a, a phone is like a, a laptop could be more like a phone phones are about cameras so I think everyone's hungering for better cameras. It's not that easy, apparently, in a laptop uh, to to do that because people are not dumping better cameras into laptops pretty much across the board. Would have been really nice to see uh, the the noise canceling microphone does sound promising, but again, uh, so I, I get drawn to the Pro 360. The uh, it was hard to tell the difference between the Galaxy Book and the Galaxy Book Pro. And understand really how those are really differentiated. Uh, they promise uh, similar types of chips. Odyssey looks cool. You know that's coming out in, in August, and there are a lot of gaming laptops that's going to compete against. I do like the cross. Yeah, again, we we're talking about the, the the cross device sharing, the commitment to that. Um, will it be like a sustained commitment? I think that's the interesting thing to me. It, it's like over time that needs to just be like stubborn and continuous to, to really work and not be like a, a project that's now and then begins to feel like it never took hold. Um, so I, I, I think those are, those are cool. I, I would love to see even more. And I really wanted more of that throwing, it, like I was talking earlier about taking a, a, a something you sketch and then throwing it to the phone and that sort of like collaborative use. Um, they didn't really show that type of handoff. Um, they look good. You know, I, I, I feel like I was hoping for something that was even more affordable, 549 or whatever, what the price was for the, um, the yeah, Galaxy cool. book. It's, it's, it's not the Chromebook territory purchase. And we don't have anything here that's like super cheap. It's like, um, it's like iPad Air Zone, you know, where it's, um, still, it's kind of mid-range expensive for a lot of people. You could have said airspace. That would have been a pun. Anyway, uh, I want to talk about what all the software stuff you guys were talking about because I'm, I was watching the chat as this is going on. People are screaming, Apple did it already. Google did it already. It's already been done. A lot of the smart switching software or being able to have continuity between your devices. And I think one of the biggest things that's been lacking when it comes to the Windows ecosystem in general is having a phone that works with your device, a Windows machine, really well. We've seen Microsoft try with their own phones, and that 
didn't go so well. And they're also working with Android at this point. So the fact that Samsung, essentially the, the there's Apple and then there's Samsung. Okay, like Samsung is the Android leader pretty much worldwide. If they have a device that works with a laptop that works really well, I'm assuming that all these Galaxy features and all this continuity stuff that we're seeing is going to trickle down to other PCs at some point. But if you buy an S device, like a Note or a S21 or whatever, or even the A series, to have a laptop that makes it really easy to go from device to device and removing some of those barriers about emailing things or tethering with your USB-C cable or setting up Android file transfer or any of that stuff, by removing all those barriers, Samsung is really trying to make it as simple to use these devices. So while other companies have went ahead and made these, these leaps earlier, because they had a very streamlined service, you're talking about, okay, we've got Apple making all the things. They have a silo, right? But here we've got Samsung working with Google, who makes Android. You have Samsung making its own software. Then you have Microsoft on Windows on their machines. And then you've got different pro partner now with the processors. Now Apple's completely siloed, right, with the M1s. So there's a lot of collaboration that has to happen to make it all fit together without requiring hours and hours of tutorials. So I, I was really impressed with that. Assuming it works like the demos, it's like, oh, smart switch. It's going to take my old Windows PC and move it to a Galaxy book. When they said get, Samsung Notes were finally coming to a PC, I, I said, holy something uh, on air, like, while we were off air, because I've been waiting for this forever. I've got a Galaxy Note. It's one of my favorite devices. And to not be able to access my notes on my PC is very confusing because it seems like it should be something that's uh, there. So I, I, I thought this was a really interesting thing. It's just like Bridget was talking about earlier. This was really about the software. The hardware is really cool and everything, but the software I think is supposed to be the star. It's just, you can do whatever you want. Um, so let's talk about the differences between the Galaxy Book Pro line and the rest of the Galaxy Books. Bridget, I know you had some thoughts on this. Well, I just want to know, how did we go a whole hour with not hearing more about this pen and what it can do? Like, I like I, I think, like, it's one of Samsung's strongest points, and it was kind of glossed over. I mean, are we just supposed to assume it's like every other pen? Like, it's supposed to come with, uh, is it the Pro 360 it comes with? Uh, it's, it, it, I know it comes with something, but, yeah. The so, um Right. So uh, first of all, there, there's no place to store it except your own pocket, obviously. They don't have like a cool magnet situation. That would be nice. Uh, but if we are having this device that talks seamlessly with your phone, can I take that pen and go back and forth with my devices? I would have loved to at least seen a little bit more about what that could have, what that experience could have been. It was very like, oh, here we're seeing uh, 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 Dan Ackerman, who got uh, a, an early look at, at, at this here, uh, the his first impressions, but yeah, I, I, I'm curious about those who have hands on time with it and what, and what that pen is like compared to the phone experience. I'm looking at Samsung's sites and I'm seeing what, where the S pen even works. It appears it only is, it gets a spotlight only on the galaxy book pro 360. It doesn't appear to be compatible with the pro which is the clamshell one. I'm, I'm not fully sure, but you would right. think that Samsung would have it on their pre-sale pages saying, hey, we have availability or at least the compatibility for it. Uh, but yeah, they didn't spend a heck of a lot of time on the pen other than it's full-sized and you're going to have to carry it. I, I thought these were really nice designed devices. That basically, the leaks we saw of the Pro 360 and the Pro were correct. The Galaxy Book was correct. Um, but what do we think about the fact we're not there was no ARM-based machine because this seems like an area that really needs some help. There's not a ton of Windows-based machines that are running on ARM. I just, I don't know if this was the right time or wrong time. Scott, what did you make of Intel only today? Yeah, I mean, I guess that, that needed to happen. You know, I think that um, it, it's a weird landscape for Windows computers. I think like when we, when we see stuff like the ARM chips and we see um, what Apple's doing and creating like a kind of unified chip across the line, what Sa Samsung making its own chips, um, I, I feel like there's still like a weird triangulation that's still going on here. Um, 
and it feels awkward because you, you know, like it, it even goes to things like the cameras, like maybe, you know, are they not able to put Samsung's best cameras into these laptops? Cause it's like hard to get the ISP to work on the, on, you know, the Intel chips. I don't know. I, I think that it seems, so it seemed like, okay. It didn't seem great. And I feel like that landscape will, will continue to change. So, um, and it's about how well it performs. I feel like I, I agree with Bridget that it, the Intel chip is like, it, it feels great, then I, then I like it, but I don't have any like conceptual thoughts of it beyond that. But I, I want Samsung's uh, fo- phone-like elements to, to really be on that laptop. And I'm not entirely clear based on this to what degree those are. I think, you know, like the display, absolutely. W- will the pen feel as, as pen-like uh, as the phone? Will it feel a little more Windows-like? I think that's like a really important fine like differentiation that like really matters to people. Like there's a lot of like specificity on like, you know, how one pen feels versus another and what is the, you know, the pencil update or what apps really the app support, Mm -hmm. how well the apps work with it. Um, And can you use like, I know we heard about some Samsung apps and this is the Android windows crossover, but like the ability, like if you have some sort of really cool, art or photo editing app that you're using on your on your Samsung phone, could you find that on this laptop as well? Or will you find moments where that doesn't cross over? Um, so I think that that's like the big question for me with the pen. And I guess that you asked about that's, Intel, but that's, that's the, I, I drifted into pen, but Intel, yeah, I mean, if they can, if they can make that work. I've got some news on the webcam. I've gone through the spec sheets of the Galaxy Book Pro and the Pro 360. It is a 720p HD camera. So it's not a 1080p camera, but Samsung was touting. It's like beauty filters and uh, uh, options to make sure that your lighting looks better, even if your lighting is poor. So they're trying to take care of, of things in software, which, you know, we've seen software can really make a huge difference, but if they're not having actual hardware chips like ISPs, like Scott was talking about, maybe it can't do the beefy work and processing. So they got to do a 720p image. It's a lot easier to clean up a fuzzy image than it is to like make, uh, do the processing for a higher res image. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to find out if the Galaxy Book Odyssey is coming out in the States. There's also another question about that because on Samsung's page, they don't mention it, at least in their US page. They've got the Pro 360, the Pro, and the Galaxy Book, um, and I want to I want to go back to this whole Intel thing because Intel came up there. There was a fellow named GB that wasn't his name; that was his nickname, and that's what I remember him as. Uh, maybe for Galaxy Book, maybe that's why they called him GB. But they were talking about the Intel Evo platform. Now, if you don't know what that is, think if if you go years back when Intel introduced the UltraBook platform, this was an idea, a standard that said, okay, if it's labeled an Evo device, it has several components that are true for every device. So in this case with Intel, that means you're gonna have more than nine hours of battery life on a full HD display. You're gonna have an 11th generation Intel Core processor with Iris X graphics. You're gonna have Wi-Fi 6, and I believe in the Pro we had Wi-Fi 6E, which is the next standard. And if you wanna know more about that, go to CNET.com and why, Wi-Fi 6E is actually really cool. Uh, there's going to be Thunderbolt 4 on the devices. So the Pro has, since the Pro is an Evo platform device, you're going to get that. So if you are trying to compare the Galaxy Book Pro to another device, look to compare it against other Evo devices. The Galaxy Books and the Galaxy Book Odyssey are not on that standard, which means you probably have... Uh, either a different processor or you have a different connection. You might not have Wi-Fi 6. You might not have whatever. So that means you really got to look at your spec sheets as to what you're getting. The Evo thing is meant to make things more streamlined. But as you just heard me say all this, I'm confused now. So, Bridget, what, what do you think about the – we have one Evo branded bunch. We have no Evo on the books. Uh, will this confuse people? Will people care about this? Or is this more like a – that Intel needs to teach people what the Evo line means. Ding, 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 ding. Yes, you're right. This was confusing. I'm watching this, like, going, wait, wait, uh, why do I feel like I'm getting multiple 
laptop switch one does what thing there's no teaching consumers uh, uh what what evil means we want time to learn these nuances <laughs> you just got to get the message across that it's just going to work um i i am wondering why this this was communicated in in different chunks of, like first we hear about the hardware then the software and, and you think the software can be the same on everything i guess um and, and i'm also left going we just had a windows presentation essentially without that Panos Panay pizzazz, um, and I kind of miss that, and I wonder if that's also why, because um, you know if if this was any other uh, Windows machine, we'd be hearing about more of of uh, the the art of the mechanics and like how that pen is better, and that was just kind of like, uh, we have really good stuff inside, let's get to some software, which, you know, and, and I, I guess it is on all of it, I mean, what do you guys, I, I want to hear from, from you guys on it, because I too am like going, okay, One's more powerful, um, and I hope the software is on all of them, I guess. Well, going to, to Panos, I spoke with him last year when the Duo came out. And, you know, the, the commitment, like Microsoft has been long focused on the Android uh, Windows relationship. And that was a lot of what Duo was exploring. Like, Duo was like the first step in Microsoft, I think, aiming to figure out how how um, Google and Microsoft can work together, and that's supposed to carry over not just on a dual screen phone, but but to other phones too. Now it seems like a similar type of proposition is being laid out here, um, but I agree the presentational style. It was not like a hyper enthusiastic. It was maybe it was like an earnest commitment, um, but it's hard. It's a little hard to read into that. I think now it's it's a question of like, is this the continuation of that? Is this like the arrival of the next step is is Google at WW not WWDC at Google I/O. Good lord, um, going to <laughs> at WWIO is that are they going to announce some you know extra compatibility things possibly um, you know for where Android's going? So I just feel like I keep waiting for that stuff to arrive for phones and computers to really dovetail fluidly. So that, again, was not the question you were asking about. the con it, Again, the, the difference between the laptops, yeah, it is confusing. But there are a lot of different configurations I'm, I'm finding confusing uh, across the board on computers lately and tablets. I feel like, again, not to cross over the Apple thing, but Apple's choices keep branching into like a million variants as well. So um, I just find the book, ver book versus book pro was was hard to understand the difference on. I totally get the Pro 360. Like, that seems really interesting, cool. I hope it's, like, hope it works as well as promised, because I, I would love to see that be cracked. Um, and the Odyssey makes sense, too. As Samsung has had a footprint for the Odyssey brand for gaming already, so, uh, you know, I think that's a continuation of that. And let's not talk about, or not forget to talk about, <laughs> 5G. Um, because, yeah, that is something that can really differentiate uh, this this here. I mean, uh, being able to take everything on the go. Uh, but, and, and once again, making your laptop more like a phone. Uh, but I'm curious to see how um, that kind of plays into how we work differently. Um, it, it, it is interesting because we'll be seeing this in more laptops now. Is this like the, you know, the step toward getting um, uh, 5G and everything? Yeah, I'm looking at the specs again to make double sure and triple sure things. The Book Pro 360 seems to be the device with 5G connectivity as an option. I do not believe that the Galaxy Book Pro non-360 has 5G. I don't know if it actually has any LTE or anything like that. Actually, no. The Galaxy Book, though, does have an LTE option. So this is really strange. I'm not Correct. sure if this is right. I'm going to double, triple check this. And and if you guys are confused as I am or we are about this, we're going to have all the full specs and all the layout. All this stuff is already up at CNET.com. You can see those images right now of what these things look like in real life and not just when they're floating around in space and disassembling themselves and reconfiguring themselves, what they really look like if you get your hands on them. So check those out at CNET.com. Uh, but yeah, it, it's hard, they, it's they hard both, to say that you have a pro line. Go ahead, Scott. They both should be 5G. The, um, 
And and then the um, but yeah, like I think that I think the mobile part of this is totally. I, I agree with you. I think this is like inevitable, right? So everything's going to get this stuff. Um, everything should have this stuff already. I mean, you have watches that have cellular, uh, tablets, you know, laptops should be standard. Um, and then moving into 5G, you, you got VR and AR headsets that are aiming for that stuff too. I mean, I think like this is laying the groundwork for the promise of when 5G becomes ubiquitous and well-performing enough and um, and reasonably priced enough that it's that it's everywhere and it just works and it's your main plan to connect. I mean, that's been the the promise, I guess. Like getting these things all connected is also part of that. Um, I I go back to I don't have like a strong need to have five G on a laptop. That being said, I feel like there are a lot of people who get um, really passionate about having that option for working on the go, and it makes sense for them. So and and not having to rely on finding a hotspot or tethering, so um, yeah, I think it's like a good overdue feature. Um, I don't get like overly excited about it, but I think that all laptops should definitely have it. And for those of you who don't know, Scott's excitable about everything. I'm not kidding. Bagel Fridays back in the day in the office days, dude, get excited. So like, if if this doesn't excite him, that's not that's not like a, it's a small thing. It just means well, like oh, it's really not that interesting. <laughs> Um, everything bagels also, on Fridays. I, they were still around. That's true. This man doing cartwheels. Man, well, I've, I've also my, my emotions have been muted in the last year, so you know probably that's also that. And I don't leave my home, so I've forgotten what the outdoors and connectivity is like. Maybe I'll appreciate that again in the coming months. It might be like when all the kids went out in the Simpsons and they, they had the the sunlight was hitting their eyes and like, oh, I remember the outside world. But I, I do want to talk about the fact that we didn't have any AMD stuff, not ARM stuff, but AMD, uh, when it comes to all these Intel chips inside. Now, Intel, when it comes to processors, look, they were the name for the longest time, but AMD recently has really turned up its game. They're fantastic when it comes to gaming PCs. They have some really great uh, efficiency when it comes to energy usage, and that was something that Intel was historically very, very bad about. And as we were talking about earlier, since Intel has the Evo brand and the platform, they actually probably have a larger advertising budget to explain the Intel Evo brand, blah, 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 blah. Get the Galaxy book or the Lenovo whatever, or this or that and the other thing. Versus AMD, that's almost more of a, I don't want to say nerdier thing, but it's more of a, it's lesser known to the general public. I know you guys watching this now. There was folks in the chat room just like, why is why is there no Ryzen in this? Why on earth are they sticking with Intel? Bridget, do you think it's a safe bet to go to with Intel? Should they have should Samsung have gone with AMD and just been like, let's just go for it? This is hard one to say, right? Because like they made a big whoop de doo about all this Intel stuff today. Um, it's not to say that they couldn't do other stuff in the future. Maybe it's it's kind of like what they, they, they just wanted to have a narrow focus in this presentation, perhaps. Um, I know, it, it, it's it's a little odd. What about you, Scott? Why, why no AMD today? I have no idea. I don't know, <laughs> but I do think, I think that, that I think the Intel thing will have to prove itself. You know, I think if they're, if they're good enough, that's great. Um, the, the you know chip situation always kind of is in flux in terms of what's best and what the performance is. I feel like I never really have a thought on how good something is until I've I've used it. Um, so it's hard to armchair quarterback what the performance is without without trying it. But yeah, it's Intel. I, again, I go back to like I feel like the other shoe dropping here, which is what put Intel on the hot seat, is the whole shifting of the computer chip industry, you know, whether it's like, you know, ARM based or, or smaller uh, architecture and where that's changing things right now. And I feel like in the PC world, it feels like mid, like one shoe dropping, then the other shoe dropping. We're a bit like mid transition, whereas like the phone landscape feels pretty straightforward and, and predictable. So it also means like if I'm buying a PC, I I I, I want to know where this all lands. You know, is this like, this is the move for Samsung? Like, is this 
you know, these are what the laptops are going to be like next year and the year after, or is this like the move for today in 2021? Um, you know, I think that's, that's always the, you know, you're going to stick with these laptops again for a, a good number of years, hopefully. So I think that's also the question of like, you know, every time you have a new computer, is this the right time to leap over? Uh, you know, is there going to be a changing of the guard uh, after that? I don't know. I'm most excited about the Galaxy Book 360. I will say since it has all the bells and whistles, it seems like an interesting laptop. If I'm, I've been going back and forth between getting a, a tablet or am I going to get a laptop? Am I going to get a desktop? And you know what? All these different devices have different use cases. I'm also I'm very curious how how well the Samsung software will work with my my Samsung Note, my personal phone. Will it work really well with my laptop as opposed to right now where? It doesn't. It just doesn't because I'm not using a Samsung laptop. So I'm, I'm really hoping that when these things come out, they're going to actually work the way Samsung d says it does. And the other thing I want, there's a, so many interesting messages in the chat right there talking about, you know, why did this take so long and what's going on with Samsung there. When it comes to a lot of this technology to get stuff like QuickShare or where what Apple users have like AirDrop, there's like a security element too, right? You don't want to be the company that set up this really easy way for you to connect to your laptop, but it so happens that somebody in the middle can just steal all your data. So you got to be really careful when you're doing this. And Samsung even, they had an eye to the past where they were talking about their battery testing because they realized we haven't forgot about the Galaxy Note 7's battery problems. So there's a lot of reasons why it takes so long to get so much progress with all of these companies. With that diatribe, I would like to thank Bridget and Scott and Stephen, who's been running this thing, and Bonnie, who's been running this behind the scenes. And uh, we're going to have first looks on the Galaxy Book Pro. I believe they're up right now. You can check them out, see them in, well, pictures. We'll have all the info on the Galaxy Book and whether the Odyssey comes to the U.S. Thank you for all for watching. We will see you at Next Unpacked, which will probably be in about two days. <laughs>